Yes, I did quit my job that I was making really good money at, and I haven't looked back. But before you take that out of context, I'm not putting this video out here to talk about how you should quit your corporate job and it's bad for everyone and no one should work a nine to five. That's just not true. That's not my motivation for this video. I just wanna inform you of the decisions and things that I saw working in corporate versus what it's like actually working for yourself. And it's not all rainbows and butterflies. And I know there are people out there saying that they would never complain about a job with high pay like mine. And that's okay, right? We all have different goals. We all have things that we want to get out of life in the corporate world. So if you enjoy your work a lot and it's a corporate job, that's great for you. I'm happy for you. But when I hang out with my friends and family, so many people complain about their jobs and how they want to quit, how they want to move jobs, move careers, and they don't have the freedom that they want. That's how I was feeling too. I just did something about it. I took action and I put my head down. It was a lot of hard work, but it really paid off. Now a little bit more of my backstory. I went to college at Arizona State University. I'm sure a lot of you watching right now are either in college or went to college or thinking about going to college. And college is great, don't get me wrong. I think that if you're furthering your education, you should really pick a major that's very in demand and specific. I personally did supply chain management and then I had another major in business sustainability, both of which are in really high demand right now, which allowed me to get the job that I did out of college. But what I noticed while I was in college was there was an immense amount of pressure from my peers to land a high paying job or a job at a prestigious company. So many people would talk about how they were getting a job at KPMG or Deloitte or some other consulting firm or accounting firm that they were just essentially name dropping and making you feel bad if you weren't in that same position as them. And that's fine. People are excited about their career. They're excited about their accomplishments and where they're going after college. But it made me think that I really had to get a high paying job at a Fortune 500 company, otherwise I was a loser. And looking back, that's just not true at all. There are so many different respectable careers out there that don't even require a college education. There are so many successful people doing coding, firefighting. There are so many jobs out there that are really good and high paying that don't have the prestigious title of some consulting firm. But my main major was in supply chain, so I was focused on getting a job right out of college that was both high paying and at a company that was like a Fortune 500 company. I landed a couple internships. One was at a semiconductor company. The other one was at a medical healthcare type of company. It's called Abbott. My last internship was at Abbott and I ended up signing an offer with them to move out to Los Angeles. So I went straight into the corporate career life right after college. So life was good. I had a good job. I was doing a lot of things on the side. I've actually been doing e-commerce and selling products online while I was in college. If you haven't seen that video, I have one on my channel that you should watch after. But overall life was good. I was living in Hollywood, which was a lot of fun at the time, especially for my age. And I only had to commute about 25 minutes to the office, which was not bad at all for living in Los Angeles. But touching on how I've always been selling stuff and entrepreneurial in some sense, even as a kid, I knew that I wanted to start a business of my own. I had no idea what, and essentially the corporate life was just a backup plan. That doesn't mean that I didn't try really hard. I actually got promoted within a year and a half at the company, and I didn't want to shoot myself in the foot and not have a backup plan, right? So the corporate life was my backup plan. But knowing that this was a backup plan, I knew that the longer I stayed in the corporate lifestyle and continued to get promotions and pay increases, I had a higher chance of being stuck in it. Most people, as their income grows, especially in a corporate life where there's somewhat stability, they increase their debts as well, right? So if you get a promotion, you buy a new car. If you get another promotion, you buy a new watch. If you get another promotion, you buy a bigger house. And now you're essentially stuck in that lifestyle because your bills and your debts are so high that it's almost impossible to leave corporate to start your own business because you've got all this debt to pay. And typically over the last you know, 100 years, you don't really make money as a startup for the first two years if you even make it past that point. So the more income you get, the more debts you get, and the less likely you're gonna leave and start your own thing. Which is why I knew that I had to focus on both at the exact same time. And it was a lot of work and it really paid off and that's why I'm here today, but I'm not gonna get into that full story. There's another video on YouTube about it. This video is about the three specific things that I learned before quitting my job. Number one is how hard that you work does not always equate to promotions or salary increases. You're probably thinking that's not what I've been told and that's not really true at all, right? So if you're working really hard, you're most likely gonna get promoted because companies typically promote from within and they want the best employees to rise up, right? That's true, but in my experience, and it's different at every single company, I saw plenty of hardworking employees exceeding their goals year over year, hitting these unreasonably high KPIs, all to get shut down when they got a promotion. I'm thinking of someone specifically, but I've seen it on multiple occasions. Well, why is that? You'd think that the company would wanna promote someone that's the best, right? Well, I've came to the conclusion, and this isn't at every company, obviously, but 
at some of the bigger ones. It's a lot of politics and timing. You could essentially have beef with your manager and they could not promote you or give you a bad recommendation. Or they might not have a position that's a right fit for you. The list goes on and on and it can get very frustrating, which is why you see a lot of young people jumping companies every two years to get the new title increase and the pay increase. Now I'll talk about my experience a little bit with getting a promotion and how I actually got it before a lot of other people that were working there should have probably got it. I'm not gonna bore you with this long story, but essentially my manager quit and I took over all of his responsibilities. So while I was working my personal job, I took over all of his tasks and I exceeded them. So after doing this without saying anything for about six months, I actually put together a PowerPoint showing every task that I have, every task that my previous manager had, how I was doing both and how I was actually exceeding them. I took this presentation to my director and I was actually shot down for the promotion. There were some excuses being made, um, but essentially I was told that I needed to wait. And an interesting fact is the director actually told me no one's ever done this before. They, no one's ever put together this PowerPoint and ask for a promotion in this type of way, which made me feel kind of weird and maybe I was, you know, overstepping my boundaries in the position that I was in. It also made me think a lot of people are probably being underpaid and not actually asking for what they deserve. It's fair to say that I was pissed off and I immediately started looking for other jobs. I was looking at sales positions because essentially it's uncapped of how hard you work is what you get paid. And that's what really attracted me to a sales position. I didn't really have any sales experience. I was a supply chain guy, so they didn't really want to take the risk. Time went on. I essentially kept asking and I finally did get the promotion. Obviously during this time, I was making a lot of money on the side doing e-commerce and drop shipping. And it was kind of funny timing because I actually got the promotion and then a week later I put in my two weeks. They were probably a little upset about that, but hey, they missed out. They should have promoted me earlier and made me happier. I might have stuck in that nine to five lifestyle and been more loyal. But this brings me to my next lesson that I learned before quitting my job, which is no one's gonna make your career but yourself. Hey guys, taking a quick break here to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. So the winner goes by the name of Thomas. I'm gonna reach out to you on YouTube as well as Instagram if you have one. So we can get your prize right over to you. And congratulations again on winning. And now let's get back to the video. In the corporate ladder, you've traditionally got the analyst, the small team manager, the manager, the director, the DVP, etc. And it goes up from there. This is typical at like a Fortune 500 company. And you technically work for everyone that's above you. And what I noticed is most of the work actually gets done by the low level employees. And as it goes up the chain, there's less hands-on work and it's more of reporting and making other people above you happy, I guess. Uh, granted, you have to make some bigger decisions. I'm not downplaying any director role or anything like that, but there's a lot less data crunching and actual analysis. It's more high level and taking a business in a certain direction. That's more of your job, which I'm again, not downplaying. It's very hard as well. It's very stressful but all of the number crunching and everything is done by the analyst. Now you look up to your direct boss as a leader and someone that's managing you, and you're hoping that they will actually promote you through this corporate ladder. They're supposed to have your back, they're supposed to nurture you and grow you into this corporate guru essentially and move you up the ladder, right? That's what you hope for if you have ambition to drive up this ladder. But that's only the case of a great manager, which are hard to come by. There are a lot of bad managers. If you're lucky to have a good manager that wants to help you grow and improve, you're lucky, you're in a really good position because there are not a lot of managers like that out there. Again, I keep saying this, but this is just my personal experience. A lot of the times managers only care about hitting their KPIs because they get bonuses at certain levels and they have to keep the people above them happy because if they lose their job, guess what? They've got that $2 million house that they need to pay off and they're stuck essentially in the corporate life and if they lost their job and didn't hit their metrics or got demoted, they wouldn't be able to pay for this. And their main goal is to actually have the best employees underneath them to help them hit their goals. And this is where the flaw comes in, right? Because why would you want to give up one of your best employees that's helping you make more money and get promoted. It's sort of screwed up in a way because a lot of managers will not want to let go of an employee that's giving them all the things that they need. For example, if you're the best analyst out there on the entire team and you're looking for a new position, want to get promoted outside of your team, your manager is probably going to think, wow, who's going to get all this work done? How am I going to fill this position with someone just as good as them? And this might lead to them delaying your promotion until they have an opportunity within the same team that's still going to help them. This is why I think that nobody is going to make your career but yourself. You're going to have to take action. You're going to have to ask directly what you want. And if you don't get it, you're essentially going to look elsewhere. And this is again, why you see so many young people jumping companies every two years. Now, this is probably a cynical view of the entire system, but this is just what I've experienced myself and what I hear from friends and family that are still working in corporate. And the last lesson that I learned before quitting my job was that job security is kind of a lie. I know that's tough to say, and I know a lot of people will rely on their jobs and trust that they won't get fired or laid off, but it happens all of the time. Anytime that there's a recession or there's a merger within the company or a divestiture, I hate to tell you this, but if you're a part of any of those things, your job security isn't as secure as you think. 
let alone if you're a bad employee, they can fire you at any second. Now, this is coming from someone that works for themselves now. And a lot of people say that, you know, if you go on an entrepreneurial journey and you try a bunch of stuff, your job security is zero, right? It's true, right? If you don't do the work and you can't really manage working for yourself and you can't stick to deadlines or get yourself up out of bed or you can't stop vacationing, whatever it is, yeah, you can lose all of your income and then you're gonna have to probably go work another job again. But if you work for yourself and you learn high income skills, you can take those anywhere. You could be a freelancer for life. Essentially, if I lost all of my income streams today, every single one of them was wiped off, I could start all over, make a lot of money really quickly and get back on my feet just because of the high income skills that I learned. For example, I run a ton of Facebook ads, right? I've spent millions of dollars on Facebook. So if I lost every stream of income somehow, I can go be the best media buyer in the world. I can do it as a freelancer if I want to, or I can work for another company, I will be hired. I get people reaching out to me all the time to be a media buyer for their company, which I obviously turned down. But my point is anyone can learn these high income skills on the internet. We live in such a great time for it. You can teach yourself, you can take online courses from Google, Facebook, whatever, be certified, practice, and you're never gonna lose these skills. These are things that you can't really focus on as much while you have a corporate job because that's really all you're focused on, especially if you work like 60 to 80 hours a week. But my point here is if someone is telling you that corporate life has a lot more job security, I actually find that to be the opposite. <clears throat> I know I have a skewed view on this and I'm open to any opinions that people have. I'm definitely wrong a lot of times, so I would love to hear other people's opinion on this, but that's just what I think. Now, those were the three main lessons that I learned while working my short time in corporate. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, the point of it was not to discourage you if you wanna to go to college, if you wanna to go to corporate, that is great, that's a fantastic option. I have no judgment for anyone that does any of those things. We all need to have employees, I have employees. These are just some of the things and experiences that I went through before working for myself. Now, if you wanna learn more about what I do or just wanna watch some of my other videos, I highly recommend checking out my YouTube channel down below if you haven't already. And if you wanna learn about my exact journey through my whole e-commerce career, make sure to check out that video on my YouTube channel as well. I hope that this video inspired some of you and it encouraged you to learn some high income skills on your own. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.